Well, welcome to Jalen Howe's Coffee House here. She has become a bit of a pro barista in addition to a pro soccer player. And Jalen, the, the first thing I want to ask you is, there's a bit of a line between liking coffee and then, oh, I need like a whole espresso machine. <laughs> so how did this happen? Like, how did you get it? How did, or where did you get the concept of like, okay, I need this, I want it, let's do it? I mean, I'd have to start when I was younger. Like my love for coffee has just grown throughout the years, but like, I was drinking coffee since I maybe like 13, like 12, what? 13. Yeah, like <laughs> I was like, and it started with like a caramel mojito. And then um, it's funny because actually she's in the league, Sophie Smith, actually, when I grew up with her, like we'd be the only ones drinking coffee when we were little and everybody thought we were crazy. And now everybody's drinking coffee. But That's um, so, but I, I've, all, I've always loved it, but um, I think I was telling you earlier that traveling throughout the world with the national team and trying different coffees from around the world, like I kind of made me realize how cool it is and just like different beans um, in different parts of the world and different flavors and stuff. So then I think like the obsession kind of started. So then I was like, you know what, I'm going to move on from the Keurig to the Nespresso machine. And then now uh like last year my first year in the league um my my grandma actually got it for me um as like uh you made it to the league type gift like so um it was it was great because the first like couple coffees i made were like actually awful and i had like a whole new appreciation for like baristas and like coffee shops that make like such a good cup of coffee so there's actually a lot that goes into it but um and I'm still learning a lot, but I really, I, I really enjoy it. It's kind of like a hobby now. So you, you get the machine, I would assume word travels through the team and the teammates of like, all right, if we want some coffee, we know that Jalen's got one. Yeah. So like, did that happen? How did it happen? And how much did you learn about your teammates and how they like their coffee as a whole? Well, honestly, like it's kind of a hobby for the team to like go out to coffee after practice. Yeah, yeah. Like we get on it too and we're like, oh, let's go get some coffee. So I already kind of knew like the ones that like coffee and um sav was my roommate at the time so the first couple cups like i would never try and she did not like it i mean she liked like sweet stuff in her coffee so eventually like i got it to where okay like it's a good cup of coffee and i could add the stuff different type of stuff and then she was like oh it's really good and then obviously like she was the one that would tell them people and whoever was over like i could make it and stuff um but now I think I have some competition with like Abby and Carson on team. They got one too. And I hear that they make a really good cup, so. Did you have to get to a point where you were even confident enough to say, hey, I'll make you a cup of coffee. Like it's good. Yes, 100%. And like, how long did that take? Like two months, because at first, like, I'm pretty sure I had Sav and Hillary try like the first or second cup. Cause I thought I was like really cool. And like, I did it and I was like, here. And then they were like, oh, this is so bad, like totally honest. And so then I was like, oh, I'm, then I didn't want to share it with them again. <laughs> I was like nervous too. So it took me a couple months and then like readjusting like the settings and getting different beans and then finally got it, I think, to where it's pretty good. What came first, your confidence as a newfound barista or your confidence as a first year NWSL <laughs> player? Probably like right about the same time, really? like middle of the year. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and, and like uh, switching to, to soccer for a moment, what, what was the, I feel like every pro athlete has like a, an aha moment or like a practice or a game where they say, okay, I kind of get this now. Like the, the adjustment is what it is but now I finally get it. Well, what was that for you in your rookie year? Yeah, um, I think coming into the league um, is different and hard for any player coming in as a, as a college player, but now obviously we have high schoolers coming in and, yeah. and stuff like that. Um, and you think that you're gonna be ready and used to the speed. You know, when I was playing with the national team and stuff, I'm like, oh, like I've seen speeds at you know, a great level, but I think seeing it consistently and day in and day out um, in every game and every player is good. It's just, it's so different. And so it does take a little bit of adjusting, um, you know, and I, I think like the first two, three months I was kind of struggling with some minor injuries and that just comes from, it's way harder playing in the pros and your body yeah and your body just has to adjust to it and so i think two three months like my body was also adjusting to it and okay. 
it's a new town. It's a new league. It's new people. It was the second year of the club. Like it's a lot of new. And so I think for that to like really settle in took a little bit for me. But I'd say like mid season um, is really where I started to feel comfortable. I was healthy. Um, I felt like I got the flow of the game, the speed of the game, um, and that's really where I thought that I started to like take off a little bit more and kind of show the league um, and my team kind of what I can bring. And I think it's a little different when you, and this is for any pro athlete, when you are a rookie who comes in with some accolades and some accomplishments, you probably feel some pressure coming in. Yeah. Did, did, did that impact you or affect you at all when you were trying to get used to things like the pressure you put on yourself and what people expect? Yeah, a hundred percent. And I'll be the first to admit it. Um, I think I'd be lying if I said I, I didn't feel a ton of pressure that first year, um, you know, coming off Mac Herman and national championship and um, in and out with the full women's team. I think I felt a lot of pressure to prove myself, um, especially on a young team and a young club. And um, I think the more people know me, they know how much I truly care about the team and the club and how much I want us to succeed. So I think I also, you know, being a young team kind of took that on my shoulders too. Um, and at times I think try to like do too much. So I think for me, it was learning to just play my game, do what I do best and sticking to that. And, you know, the rest will come. But I think definitely for sure, like I, there was too much pressure built up. And um, I think a lot of people, you know, make that mistake. And it was a mistake that I was glad that I learned early. And now I can obviously adjust to that, learn from it and move forward. And I think, you know, throughout that year, I did learn like the importance of the mental side as well as the physical side. Yeah, I guess the, that's something that everybody tries to tell you ahead of time yeah. when you're going to the pros, but I feel like it's something you don't really learn until you're actually in it, doing it every day. And I guess what steps did you have to take to try and take care of yourself mentally and, and make sure you're ready to take on that kind of responsibility? Yeah, I think, like I said, it's both mentally and physically, it's a whole new game when you get into the league, like you said, like it's a nine month season that is totally different from college soccer where it's just the fall. So I think first my body adjusting and um, for me that was learning from the older players and listening to the great staff that we have. Um, you know, every day is taking care of your body. It's whether it's prehab before practice or recovery after, it's a routine that you have to get your body on and adjust to and I think First and foremost, I had to, to learn that with my body and just how to really take care of it. Um, and then mentally, yeah, um, I think, you know, like I said, for a while, it was a struggle with some pressures and stuff like that. And obviously our results weren't coming. It was a new place. There was a lot building up. So eventually um, I reached out to a sports psych and um, I've been working with him ever since. And, you know, at first I was like, man, I don't know really what he's going to say that I don't already know, like acting like I, you know, would know. And um, it's silly thinking back on it because uh, he has helped me in so many ways. And I'm so glad that I did it. It's just changed my game completely um, just because I feel like mentally I can go into every game prepared. I have a new pregame routine. Um, I have a new postgame routine, um, not even physically, just mentally how I prepare uh, my, my mind. So. Um, it completely changed it for me. And uh, I think, you know, it's becoming more and more of a thing, but I don't think we talk about it enough and the importance of having a sports psych or having a therapist um, because it is a hard job. And to be able to perform at an elite level and to be able to get to where I wanna be, um, I wanna do all the little things right. And I think that this is kind of something that's overlooked a lot of times. You mentioned the routines. There's a certain comfort in that, I guess, mm -hmm. and how it helps you mentally. So pre and post game, like what do you do that you feel like kind of sets you or, or just gets you in a zone? Yeah, and I think for me, it was kind of like in college, I'd be like, oh, I didn't really have a pre and post game routine. You know, you can kind of like do it on the fly. Like it's kind of like when people like, tell you, you should stretch before you work yeah, out. It's yeah, like, I don't yeah, stretch. Just like, I, I just like have a cup of coffee before the game. <laughs> like I <laughs> have a nitro cold brew, like, you know, I didn't really have a routine, so I think that was one of the main issues. Um, and I think 
what helped me kind of take the pressure off and eventually, you know, play how I wanted to play. Um, and I still have so much more to show, but um, I think the visualization really helped me. So before a game, um, you know, we have our pregame meal and our pregame meeting. Um, I like to go back to the house and it sounds weird, but like close my eyes and sit in silence and literally visualize like what I want to do in that game, like and pick three things that are super important for me in this game and how I want to help my team. So it breaks it down for me. It doesn't feel like I have to do everything at once on the field. If I pick three things that I know I'm really good at and that I want to make a difference on the field that game and visualize it in my head, um, then it kind of breaks it down for me. And um, there's so many studies um, that visualizing, you see a lot of the greats doing it now and how much it helps your performance. Um, and so after practicing that, and I still do it every day, it's not just pregame, it's literally when I wake up in the morning, I will do it for five minutes. Um, practicing mental visualization of how I want to be on the field. Um, and then post game, um, it's kind of the same thing. I just go through the plays in my head of things I would change, things I want to do better. Um, but I think the other thing I learned is not being too hard on yourself. It's a long season and I'm a bit of a perfectionist, just like a lot of <laughs> pro athletes are. Um, and so I think it's just giving myself uh, the grace to be like, oh yeah, that wasn't my best game, but you know, there's a game next week and another practice and being able to push yourself, but at the same time, not be too hard on yourself. And I think that's something that Bev has been teaching us a lot lately and been helping us a lot with too. And um, so, yeah, that's kind of my, my pregame routine, but um, it's really helped me, really helped me a lot. So moving from year one to year two, how different did you feel mentally, emotionally, in terms of your preparation coming into this season than you did going into last season. I would assume it was pretty vast. Oh my gosh. Like literally night and day, you have no idea. Like I, I joke about it. I like just feel like a different person and a different player coming into this year. Um, having a year on your belt, like experiencing the league and knowing what to expect. I think last year I didn't know what to expect and um, having that pressure on myself to perform. And I think now that I took care of the little things, um, I know I'm prepared for the season, which takes a lot of that pressure off. And now I'm like, now I want to go on the, the field with the girls. We have such a great team. Now I want to go on the field and um, just help them in any way possible and um, just play my game. And I think that's, that's huge for me um, because, you know, I'm trying to do stuff that, you know, that's not a part of your game, but I just want to be able to do what I know I'm, I'm good at. You're 23 years old, and it's your second year in the league, and you get named captain, which I know it's important in every sport, but I feel like in soccer, it's it's a totally different designation. Like, you, you are seen as an extension of, like, leadership for the whole team and a face of the team. Do you feel like getting that designation was a, a confirmation of all the stuff that, that you have been working on over the past year? Like, look, I focused on this, this, and this, and this is like a fruit of that like yeah sense. yeah for sure I mean it was such an honor and I just thanked Kim so much um coming you know when he when he told me I was a little little surprised just because of my age and he's like age just a number like uh just his confidence in me really um helped and it meant a lot to me um just the confidence that he he you know put in me um but yeah I think it also just really meant a lot just because this off season, like I worked my butt off. Like I knew I had to get better for this team and I want to win with this team. Um, and, you know, I also have some pretty like hefty individual goals. So I was like, it starts now, right after the off season. So, um, you know, I, I worked on different recovery type stuff. I worked with a speed and strength coach. Um, I was working with, uh, you know, my sports psych. I had a dietitian working with me. I had, um, you know, I, I had an extensive blood test that showed deficiencies in different vitamins and minerals I had. So I got on a different diet and vitamin regimen, um, different strength and speed training. Um, I went up to uh, my favorite technical coach, Aaron Bird, up in Michigan to work on technical stuff. So like I wanted to hit all of the little areas that I knew could make me better in an off season. Um, and so that I wasn't lacking anything and I knew mentally coming into the season, I was the most prepared I could be. Um, 
and so I think those were, were huge things for me. And also, like, honestly getting a break. Like, <laughs> I, I was going for three, three years, so being able to go home and, um, you know, I, I could focus on my faith a little more, like go to church and hang with my family. Um, those are very, very important things in my life. So I think just getting centered and grounded again was also huge for me. So when Kim did name me captain, he did tell me he's going to name me captain. I think it was great for me to hear just because all of those things kind of came together and I knew the work that I put in the off season um, had paid off in that sense. And then from then on out, I was like, what can I do for this team? Um, and my mentality kind of changed just because there are so many experienced and good players on the scene, you know, like Jess, Abby, yeah. Carson, like Nadia, you have so many. So like, it was such an honor to do that. And I went up to him like, guys, like, I know I'm yelling, you're going to have to help me. Like, I respect them so much as people and players. And so um, I'm just excited to be able to, to learn from them and implement the stuff that, you know, I've done in the off season as well. What did they tell you? in that Because that's something you've said before, and obviously you get the support, and I feel like that means a ton when you get that support mm -hmm. from accomplished players. But what did they initially tell you about the expectations of being a captain and what they wanted to see from you and supporting you in that role? Yeah, I mean, they were great. They were just kind of laughing, and they were like, Jay, we got your back. Like, you know, we'll, we'll help you with anything. You can come to us. Like, And I was like, call me out, too. Like, anything, like, you know, like, I, I want to learn. So um, they were they were so great and that just giving me some extra confidence. And I, you know, like I said, I, I truly respect what they have to say. And so I think that's huge for me and I'm going to be able to lean on them a lot in this season. And, you know, not even them, but just like we just have so many great players on this team. And I, I just feel like as a leader, everybody's voice should be heard. And as a, you know, like I said before, to be a great leader, you also have to be a great listener. And so that's what I want to be able to do is just listen to everybody's input and um, kind of be the mediator between um, us and everybody else and do what I can for the team to help us succeed. And you signed an extension with the club and you weren't the only one. It's you, Lauren, Savannah, Katie. What was it about not just racing Louisville, but the city of Louisville that seemed to resonate with you guys to say, we want to make this a home for the next couple of years and really be at the ground floor of what this club can be? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think Louisville, I mean, I say this all the time. I'm like, it is such a unique place and such a unique market. Um, a lot of other teams have very big cities and big markets and um, ours is a little smaller, so I think it's a little more personal, which I really like actually, because we're more in touch with the community. And that's something that I think is so fun. And you'll see the girls now, like the amount of community work that we're able to do and the amount of like, even just like fun stuff that we're able to do just because we are one of the only, you know, teams in Louisville, a pro team in Kentucky. I think it's, it's so fun and so unique. And so that's a huge part and I think Honestly, just the club's commitment to this team just showed so much to me. Just like our facilities are amazing and I don't think they get brought up enough in um, the NWSL or in women's soccer, just our world-class facilities, just how amazing they are. And you can see that from the club investing money into us and they want us to be at our best. Like we have our own weight room, our own chefs, own field, like our stadium's amazing. You just don't see that. And so that makes my job 10 times easier um, when everything's just kind of laid out for you. Um, so it's funny, I'm like, I, I literally can't complain one day being here just because they set it up so perfect. So um, between the club's investment uh, into this team and the surrounding city and how unique and personal it is, I think those are two huge things that we looked at and honestly our team also like just like loves each other like I know that sounds like corny like oh we're a family but like you'll hear it again and again just like how close this team is and um, that's huge because we see each other way too much every day so <laughs> being able to be around um, quality people as well as quality players was super important for us too. This sounds like a, a bit of a generic question because I think winning is always going to mean a lot no matter where you do it but it sounds like over these two years, you've you've done a lot of like personal, like soul searching or a journey in a way. 
would that excuse me would that make winning this season and, and getting into the playoffs mean that much more to you and and I guess goes back to that confirmation idea of like we took all these necessary steps I've taken all of these necessary steps here it is we're finally there yeah I mean 100 percent um I think that would be huge for this club in the city and I think that we have the pieces now to do it and yeah obviously like personally I'm a competitor I always want to win I'm um not a stranger to it in my past so that would be huge for me but I just you know for these girls just want to win and, and the coaching staff and the fans and like you just see the amount of time and effort that everybody puts into their jobs daily and you just want to see it pay off for everybody just because I just feel like we have such a special team and such a special group of humans and so to be able to see that pay off for everybody um would be huge and you know I, I I think a lot of people count us out and um I I think that we kind of take that upon ourselves to be like all right we're gonna we're gonna show them what we're about and um so I think that's super exciting for us and so that would make it make it even better too just kind of our, our family knowing that we can do it and um to be able to be in playoffs and then obviously we would love to win um would be huge for everybody. Well, there's one competition I think that would mean more, and it's whenever this espresso machine showdown between you, Abby, and <laughs> Carson happens. I don't know if that victory would mean as much. Oh uh, uh, yeah, it'd be, it would be like right there, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it means a lot to us that you sat down and, and talked about all this. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Really appreciate it. Jalen Howe, captain of Racing Louisville FC.